Hello my friends, it's going to be a lousy audio video day because I don't feel like setting up the full camera rig. So I'm using my cheapo action camera. By cheapo, I mean like it was $150 nine years ago. The Sony AZ-1 if you care. Anyway, one of the things that doesn't make sense to me that we probably should chatter about for a second is Kamala Harris winning the election on the basis of abortion. So, first of all, one of the things, oh, by the way, it's very funny that we're talking about this abortion thing, and uh, check this out, this, this, this Pennywise thing, it's, it's great, I should have stopped and took some video of that instead of started this. <clears throat> but one of the things that I don't understand is Kamala Harris winning the election because of abortion, because of, a, of concern that Donald Trump is going to ban abortion. At no point did Donald Trump say he would ban abortion. In fact, Donald Trump has explicitly said that he would not ban abortion. I've gone over this in a previous video. I, I, I don't have like clips to show you, uh, but multiple times Trump has consistently said he won't be banning abortion. Um, you might be thinking, well, what about Roe versus Wade? Roe versus Wade was bad law. Everybody agrees on that, even far left lawyers say that Roe versus Wade is bad law. Why is Roe versus Wade bad law? Because it's literal legislation from the bench, which is constitutionally not allowed. Now, one of the other things, <laughs> oh, I, I wanna skip the abortion thing there for a second and mention that Donald Trump cannot also become dictator on day one because he can't. He just, it's not allowed. The Constitution doesn't allow it. There's more than enough apparatus in government that has shown they have no problem going against Donald Trump if he tries to ask them to do something that they're not allowed to do. Um, now, some people would tell you that Donald Trump, for example, attempting to have uh, the vice president, plat uh, whatever it is, platform or... Um, my God, the, word, I'm, the, the word's escaping me, but it's like sign off on an alternate slate of electors was some sort of high crime. Um, it was a, a fundamental violation of the Constitution. No, no, it's just like all the other Trump election cases. All of them were legal cases. He was well within his rights, his legal rights. We're not talking morality, we're talking legal rights to ask whether that could be done is another issue, but he's well within his rights to ask. You can ask the legal system for a lot of things, and the legal system is not gonna put you in jail just for asking. Um, they'll shut you down and be like, nope, you cannot have that, and that's pretty much it. But anyway, back to the abortion thing, um, I was thinking about why is it that abortion would win Kamala Harris the election in the first place? Because I think a lot of people look at the Trump side of things and, and the whole, oh, Donald Trump's going to ban abortion uh, lie. It, it is a lie that is not going to happen. It simply will not. There's, <laughs> it, he, he can't just unilaterally ban abortion. Congress would have to do that. He would have to sign off on it. Um, but also a federal ban on something, well, states can just say, well, no, we're going to allow it in the state because the whole abortion thing, um, a federal, if you know about the drug thing, you, you know exactly how that works. So even if he was able to unilaterally ban abortion, it still wouldn't apply intrastate, only interstate. Like, uh, they could potentially ban traveling across state lines to get an abortion, maybe, um, but a federal ban on abortion would be a pretty difficult thing to uphold uh, because most of the laws that you're governed by are state laws, not federal laws. The Constitution severely limits the power of the federal government. Um, and in fact, the federal government's powers have been granted by mostly ignorance um, or, you know, fanatical zealots that will gladly ignore the Constitution um, and ignore the unconstitutionality of things in order to get their own way. Thus, we have the government we have today, federally, state-wise, all of it. But um, the federal government is actually far overstepping the bounds of what the Constitution allows already. Most of its taxation is illegal. Um, any taxes that are spent on charitable things like aid 
uh, they're not actually constitutionally authorized to do that. Like things like FEMA should not exist. Things like uh, the EPA, at most, in a much more limited capacity. Um, environmental disputes that, that apply between states, maybe. But Wicker v. Filburn, which expanded the Commerce Clause powers of the federal government to a point never before conceived, um, that needs to that needs to be retracted somehow as quickly as possible. The Commerce Clause should not grant the federal government the right to do some really crazy things. By the way, Wicker v. Filburn, real quick, if you haven't heard of it, <clears throat> guy grows wheat on his own land for his own consumption. The federal government comes after him and the rationalization that won at the Supreme Court level was that, well, okay, the federal government has a jurisdiction not because he was engaged in interstate commerce, but because he was growing wheat and he could have sold the wheat across state lines. He, he could have engaged in interstate commerce with this wheat. The wheat is a thing that people engage in interstate commerce over, and he and, and he's growing wheat. Therefore, because it, the potential exists for him to maybe do interstate commerce if he wanted to, even though he's not, the federal government does have jurisdiction and control. Totally interstate matter, federal government has jurisdiction. That's a violation of the Tenth Amendment. That's genuine dictator garbage. But Trump's supposed to be dictator on day one. Well, how did that work out for him? Let's think about it for a minute. If we go back to the 2020 riots, Donald Trump was talking about sending out the National Guard to get all these psychotic rioters under control. They were literally destroying or damaging federal buildings with explosives. This, this is not a joke. This is not some kind of um, like exaggeration, uh, hyperbole. <clears throat> we have no shortage of video of people throwing various explosive and fiery devices at federal courthouses on the West Coast. Um, literal federal buildings being attacked with explosives. Um, and Trump wanted to send out the National Guard. And, and to be completely frank, I think that once you get to the point where it's federal buildings being assaulted, regardless of who's doing the assaulting, that the authority should be there to do that. Um, now, as far as just general rioters, no. And this is the thing. Let's examine what Trump did when he had the opportunity to be a dictator, because all of these idiots saying that Trump would be dictator from day one, forget that Trump was the president for four years four years. If he wanted to be dictator, he had four years to do it. So we've already gone through four years and it never happened. It literally never happened. He didn't even come close. When he said he was going to send out the National Guard to deal with the rioters, <clears throat> what did he actually do? Well, the Tenth Amendment says that the federal government has very limited capacity to do anything about anything. The federal government is only realistically allowed to uh, do a small amount of stuff defined in the Constitution and sending um, sending government troops out to... Um, what's that camera? Dirty? Oh, God. Yeah. Well, this video is pretty good. 